Right up front, uh, please let me apologize for the crazy vibrations in this video. I had set up my camera on a tripod right on the floor of my shed, not realizing that every little vibration, whether it be by me taking a step and walking, or moving my chair, or moving equipment, or running tools, would create a crazy vibration that would just radiate up the tripod into the camera and somehow mess with the frame rate and cause this crazy vibration. I couldn't have done this if I tried to on purpose. It's a very strange effect. I've tried to eliminate it as much as I can in this video and at some point even tried some experimentation with padding the feet of the tripod. But anyway, um, here we go. Continuing to build the side walls, legs, and walls for my heat shield. Swings and swings. Watch the pocket watch. It swings and swings. You're becoming so sleepy. So incredibly sleepy right now. I bought six brackets to piece these pieces of uh, my heat shield together, right, to make corners. And in Lowe's, they wanted seven bucks a piece for six inch brackets. So I need six of them, so that's like 45 bucks with tax and everything. So I bought this strip of uh, steel for $14. And I'm making brackets. And they're nicer than the ones that I would have paid for that were prefabricated. These are gonna work better for me. I should be using my bigger vise, which is over in a shed across the road. So I'm just using this for now. And my vise isn't even attached to the table. One of these days I'll attach my vise to the table. It's in a bracket. Six beautiful brackets. Fight inflation with self fabrication. All right.
Schaffen, Turm! Tight quarters! Need a bigger garage! Lot of repeat activity with this project. Once you figure it out, just go ahead and repeat a bunch of times. All right, this is an experiment with having some cushion under the legs of the tripod to see if I get rid of that weird vibration thing. This is my first time ever trying to cut downspout pipe aluminum downspout, downspout pipe, say that 10 times fast, not plastic. So I'm using this, I'm going to insert the 2x3s inside of here as the legs to my heat shield in an attempt to be a heat shield to the legs themselves. Uh, there will be an air gap between the legs on two sides which will allow air to flow up this pipe which should cool the wood and not cook the wood and it will also draw up air off the floor and bring it up, which is the theory. So anyway, I was gonna use tin snips on this, but I'm gonna try it with the old Sawzall. It's gonna be noisy, so let me see how ugly this gets. That actually worked quite well. It's a good clean cut. I like it. I will use it again. I could file this down a little bit, get rid of these rough edges, but it's not going to matter. I could probably hammer them down. So when I insert this, you would think, who would have thunk that you would want to put the board in the 2x3 this way, right? But there's too much play. It turns out, if you turn the 2x3, did I say 2x4 before? 2x3? If you turn it this way and squeeze it up just a little bit, it fits just good enough to where it's tight and I'll be able to drive the screws through here and it'll be real snug and here's the air, the air gap, the air gaps that I was talking about. So, you know, picture it on the floor as a leg. It'll have air and I'll, I'll staple it, I'll run my uh, fasteners through here, right through this seam, which will make it nice and tight, and I'll have air gaps going up, and it'll act like its own little chimney. My cut's a little crooked, but I think it'll work. All right. Onward! Here's what I mean about building this leg. So there's a specific way it's going to go. I have it marked, which is forward and top. So I have to think about this now. Forward is going to be like this. And the seam will go to the heat shield to get pinched between the screw. Now I have a mark on here, two inches, and that's going to jar the camera. So I have a mark on here for two inches, which I want to leave open at the bottom. Let's see if I can expose that right to the mark. That's it, my two inch mark. So this will be at the floor. And there's the gap. And then this seam will go against here and I'll screw into this. 
with bolts going all the way through with washers, just like I have big washers here. And it'll be raised up two inches at the bottom, and this will allow the air to flow up. And I think that it'll take cold air off the wall and draw it up as well to keep air moving around behind the stove. I like it. So all three walls of my heat shield are bracketed together with my homemade brackets. Now I gotta work on the legs. And you always come up with some kind of challenge, I'll call it. Because, well, I'm gonna have to build this entire thing in this shed and then make sure it works and then disassemble it and build it in the trailer. So now it comes time for the legs. And here's my dilemma, I guess. So this is a back leg, which will go here. And there's brackets under it, which is great for reinforcement. But here's a front leg, which is gonna go here. And I can figure out where they're going because I got my two inch mark, so that's easy enough. And this one's not got a bracket on it, so I'll probably put four screws in here instead of the three that are there. But my problem is, I've got pre-drilled holes here that I can go through and come all the way through. Well, I want to come all the way through, but that's my problem. I can't, because I've got over three and a half inches from here to here to put a four inch bolt through from the other side, but I've only got two and a half inches of drill bit length. I need a longer bit. I don't have a longer bit, you know, so I've tried putting it out as much as you can, but then it starts to run goofy. We'll see. So, what I think I'm going to do, yeah, I, I got another eighth of an inch out of that. So what I think I'm going to do, I already have pre-drilled holes here, I'll clamp this. I'll drill from the other side up into here, not coming through because my drill bit's not long enough. Then I'll take this off, see how far I can go through. I'll never try to, I'll never be able to guess to come in from this side and meet it. And this side, I'm just hoping I could, I'll clamp this on, pre-drill holes from the other side, go as deep as I can into here, take it off, and then continue to drill through. And then, I don't know, maybe I'm gonna have to try to find a longer drill bit. But I'll figure it out. So it's always something that challenges you, but that's kind of the, the fun of doing this, is figuring it out. And I really never draw anything out. I should. I do some little sketches sometimes, and but mostly I visualize this all in my head, and I think about it, and I think about it, and I ruminate on it, and I look, and I come back to it, and sometimes, like I said, I'll sketch a little something out, but I don't make plans. But it's good to know math, right? Because if I don't have a long enough drill bit, I should know that stuff up front, but uh, we'll figure this out. I think I've done some of that math in my head, and I'm working in the reverse image here, in a mirror image. So uh, I've got it bolted down, I've pre-drilled some holes. I believe I'm centered on my seam. At least it appears so. And I'm gonna drill as deep as I can here, and then take this heat shield off and try to drill a little deeper and see if I can get through all the way to the other side. You know what they should put on the drill? I just thought of it as a little spirit bubble, spirit le le uh, level, whatever you call that, so that you can tell if you're perpendicular to your work so that you're not you know, drilling sideways, unless you want to, because I want to go straight through this as straight as possible. So you just eyeball it. Looks perpendicular to me. Feels perpendicular. At least I'm hitting beef here, not blowing air balls. This one's going to be close with the Let's 
see what it looks like if I went through my seams proper. My shed's getting tighter and tighter. Once I get this project done, though, I'll have a lot more space to work on the next project. Look at that, perfectly through the center of the seam. That's great. All right, now I'm gonna see if I can, well, I wonder if I can now. Ouch, I need to come all the way through. But this isn't gonna do it, because I don't have enough drill bit. Nope. No. I'll figure something out. I always do. I wonder if I could poke something through there to at least make a dent on this side and come back through this side, but I don't know, I'll figure it out. Well, would you look at that? Since I was so far through here, I pulled a bit out and just left it in. That's not called a chuck, is it? Maybe it is, I guess. I just left it about a quarter inch in the chuck. It seems to be spinning pretty straight. And I went through one hole and I came through the other side. So I think we're in business here. Yes, we're going through all the way. The bit came out. There it is, because it was too loose. But that's good, I'm through. I can grab that with a vice grip or something. Well, I don't want to grab it on this end with a vice grip because I'll mess up my bit. Maybe I can just push it out. Yeah, there it is. And grab it with the old handy channel locks. Or put the drill back on it, tighten up the chuck. But I'm through, that's good. Here is the first iteration of my heat shield for the wood stove. I'm about to disassemble half of it and bring it over to the trailer and test it out. That's what it looks like. Looks like a manger. Mm -hmm. 